What is going on, you guys? Welcome to another episode of Hero TV. I am so glad that we are back doing another episode of Hero TV, but not just any epi- uh, episode, a special episode of Hero TV where we, where we will be reviewing The Crisis on Infinite Earth Part 1. Last night was such an amazing event. I'm going to tackle what I thought were the great pros of this episode. I'm going to tackle some story points. And I'm also going to tackle some some cons that I did not like about the episode as well. Um, if you if you haven't already and you're if this is your first time ever watching any of my videos here on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you get all the notifications of what we're doing here at Momentum media and all the different types of videos shows and etc that's going on here on my channel now let's go ahead and jump into the review this show starts off by us seeing the monitor moderating across the galaxy the whole universe where we see multiple planets with different heroes we got a glimpse of the titans now we know that titans is connected to the arrowverse because they have their own earth we got we got a glimpse of the tim burton batman uh movie where we saw his uh his universe get eviscerated we're watching these different earths get eviscerated we saw bart burt wards burt burt wards uh robin walking his dog and a future not necessarily futuristic but a on an earth where he's just walking his dog and he's and he's playing dick grayson robin and he's like holy cow and they he gets eviscerated and we're watching these elements play by just within the first two or three minutes of this show we are watching all of the different Earths that exist in this universe. And it was actually really cool to see that there are multiple Earths that we had some skepticisms about that we now know are part of all of the same universe. Now we know that Titans, the the, the Titan show is a part of the CW's crisis on Infinite Earth in regards to them having their own Earth, which I thought was pretty cool. To jump a little bit forward, we see Harbinger going on each earth casting each character to earth 38 where we see uh arrow and his daughter come to earth 38 we see the flash we see uh sarah and the adam come to earth uh 38 from the legends we are they're basically assembling this team getting uh and they're going to make their stand here on earth 38 to make sure that they can try to do what they can to prevent earth 38 from dying but at the end of the episode we see the earth dying the really cool about this particular the really cool thing about this particular episode we get to see um these different characters interact when harbinger pulls batwoman into earth 38 she immediately punches her when she gets there because she realizes that she doesn't know any of these people here and she didn't like the way she was pulled away from her crime scene trying to find um the lead antagonist of that particular show. And it was actually really cool to see them interact. The one key thing that I noticed about that is when Harbinger pulled pulled uh, Batwoman, Batwoman seemed like she didn't know who the rest of the characters were in that show. Even though she was introduced into Elseworlds, she doesn't seem like she knew everyone except Kara, which kind of didn't make sense because in Elseworlds, uh, she got introduced to the Flash. She got introduced to Batwoman. She got introduced to Arrow. She got introduced to Supergirl. So for her to show up, she said, I don't know any of these people. And she was like, you know me, though. Kara told her, you know me. And it was kind of weird to see that. Um, I know that Batwoman takes place, um, I want to say, before Elseworlds. Um, one of my biggest qualms about Elseworlds was... Um, if you're going to do a Batwoman spinoff show, how are you going to tell a cohesive Batwoman story? And I've been following up on Batwoman, and I'll give my review for Batwoman sometime down the line, but that's neither here nor there. But that was really cool to see 
her interact with the characters as well. Another cool thing I liked about this particular crossover is that we see the quirkiness of the legends are the same. You know, they are still funny people. Sarah's still a badass. She knows how to fight. And they go back to go back in time to, well, not back in time. They go to a parallel, parallel Earth on 2046 of Star City because uh, Kent and his wife, they sent their child uh, to Earth and it went to a different Earth as the crisis was eviscerating their city. So it was actually really cool to see another version of Oliver at, at 2046 where he doesn't know um, anything that's going on. We see her and Sarah, him and Sarah fight. And that was actually pretty cool as well. Another pro I would have to say about this particular uh this show is that we actually saw somewhat of a human side of the monitor. And what I mean by that is that when Oliver is confronting him, he's telling him, hey, you are supposed to spare uh, Barry and Supergirl from not dying. That is the deal that we made. In order for the universe to keep balance, I will fill in that place. I will die. And it seemed like in that conversation, the monitor wasn't wasn't really sure how the crisis was going to take place because even he said that this is bigger than him. He doesn't necessarily know the multitude of what's about to go on. And it was actually really cool to see that that dialogue between Oliver and the monitor. Another cool thing I liked is that how the team came together and they're devising their plan of how to stand against uh, the this antimatter wave and these different little ghost drones or whatever they were. Um, the fight scenes of that were pretty cool. Um, to see Kara, Kara and uh, Superman work together, I thought that was pretty cool as well. Keep in mind, Elseworlds that happened last year was supposed to be the setup point for Crisis. If you will, this was supposed to be the Infinity War to the end game. You know, but... This particular crossover that we saw for part one was very linear. We got a great cohesive story of what was supposed to happen from point A up into the final point of point B, which actually launches point C into tonight's crossover. So I had a really good time watching this. I, I, I was really cool to see uh, Oliver pass down the mantle to his daughter being the Green Arrow. It was really cool to see Flash uh, interacting with the characters there. My only cons for this is that the monitor is supposed to be a god. And it seems like, to me, he is a little clueless of what's going on. And what I mean by that is that he knows that the crisis is coming and he knows what's going to happen. But at the end of the episode, we saw Oliver die. And the monitor says in the episode, I saw Oliver dying, but... Not in this way. I didn't foresee him dying like this. And that tells me that he isn't quite sure how this is going to turn out. Now, we all as comic book fans know that Flash is still going to be alive. We all know that Oliver could potentially still be alive. I mean, he still has a few episodes left on uh, Arrow. So we all know that he's going to be alive in some way, shape, or form. But at the end of the day, when we saw what we saw at the end of that episode, it was like, okay, this is kind of weird that he doesn't necessarily know how things are going to turn out. Also, we got to see uh, Primera, uh, which is uh, Harrison Wells. Um, he just showed out a no showed up out of nowhere saying that he's uh, basically paying his price for submitting himself to the anti-monitor. And, and apparently the anti-monitor is the villain, but I really think from what I what I think of this show, the primary monitor is the villain. I think he is the villain and maybe he's the anti-monitor and he doesn't even know it. Either way, there's something coming and I am very excited to see what the next part of this crossover is going to be. Um, I can't wait for episode two, which comes out tonight. So if you have the CW, tune into the CW tonight, seven, seven to eight uh, Pacific or standard time. I'm not sure to watch part two of the crossover. 
This is my review of Crisis Part 1. I had a really good time watching the different Earths, the different characters interact, the fight scenes. Um, I, I love the dialogue and I love what they are doing. I cannot wait to see how, what they're going to do next because now that Oliver's dead, I wonder how they're going to proceed. Like, I wonder what phase two is going to be. So I can't wait to see how that's going to come about. Thank you guys for watching this inter uh, this uh, review of Crisis on Infinite Earth Part 1. Please like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel where you get all the new updates of every time I'm releasing an episode of Hero TV or any other show here on Momentum Media. Thank you guys for watching this video. And as always, you have a blessed day.